Well, hi, thanks for joining me in my shop. I'm going to be taking a closer look at my battery box here that I've, uh, battery pack, I guess I can call it, that I built to use with uh, farm radios. But first, let's take a look at this. Now, this is one of the farm radios I was powering the battery pack. And you might remember I forced viewers who watched my previous video to to watch me shrink these sleeves down here in a very exciting moment during that video. But, uh, well, you know, that's the way things can go time to time. Things don't work out exactly the way you want them. So, there we go. That's better. Isn't that good now? You know what's happened here, which is what I've been correcting. So these, <laughs> yes, I made a boo-boo and I've been correcting it. These are the connectors I'm using. Of course, one connector has three exposed pins. The other connector only has one exposed pin. Guess which one is supposed to connect to the power? The one with only one exposed pin. And the reason for that is, if you have something like this hanging out of your battery pack with these three pins out here, how long is it going to be before you walk up with a piece of metal and go like that? How long? I don't know. This is the one that should be hanging out of the battery pack. It doesn't matter how many times you whack it with a piece of metal, nothing's going to get short. So somehow I didn't think of that. Consequently, I have to put this plug on these wires. I, I promise I will not force you to watch more shrinksly shrinking, but I've already made all the corrections to the other radio and to the battery box. And that's why uh, this, this connector is on here now. It's only one exposed pin. No chance of shorting. Let's test it. No chance of shorting. Fantastic. So, I'm going to go over this box in a little bit of detail. There's nothing complicated about any of this, but I know some uh, viewers might be curious, uh, may have your own battery operated radio, and you're wondering, well, what exactly did I do here uh, to, to get this thing together? As I say, it's nothing complicated. Okay, so. Here we go. That's the connector that's hanging out of the back of the radio now. It doesn't matter that these are exposed because the radio, when it's not plugged in, is nothing. That's great. Here's an example of another radio. I'm just going to show you the, uh, the plug arrangement. Uh, on this radio, I've wired this right in, right in on the battery cables. Uh, this one comes with a plug on the back. <clears throat> the radio's not in my shop, so I can't show you the part that's <clears throat> hanging out of the radio, but take a look. This is the part that's coming from the battery. <clears throat> and you see the manufacturers of the radio put the socket here to avoid the same problem that I'm trying to avoid, which is having all these pins exposed on the battery, battery supply. So that's how they did it. Of course, they didn't have this kind of connector at that time. This is what they used. And it's just a simple matter of uh, soldering the wires onto the lugs, <coughs> excuse me, the right way. But if you look carefully, you'll see that I bent them in there in a very particular way. If you don't bend the wires like that so they can come out the hole easily, when you slide the cup up, the wires will pull all these connectors towards each other and uh, increase the chance of a short, just, just like that little piece of wire was doing there. So if you bend the wires like this, then the terminals will not be tugged in. You can't see it happen when you slide this over it. That's, that's the deal. You can easily overlook that. So the different radios uh, do this differently, but the plugs that go to the batteries are rather standard. Here's, here's the old ones here. So that's, that's the kind of plug that would go to the one and a half volt battery. Okay, and these are the kind of plugs that go to the 45 volt batteries. There was no 90 volt battery. You had to buy two 45 volt batteries. So if we, if we look at this set here, see there's two, basically, if I untangle the wires basically two plugs with a wire in between and then these are the wires that would go back to the radio. So you'd have a 45 volt battery plus
plus another 45 volt battery to give you the 90 volts. So that's what's going on with these older connectors. The polarity in them is controlled by the, the shape of these terminals. They can only be plugged in one way. And in this case, one terminal is fatter than the other to control the polarity of these. And that's the old. We'll take a look at the... Uh, oh, let me make a little diagram here first. Excuse me for my bad artwork. But basically, we're talking about two completely separate power supplies in that box. There's four terminals here for two circuits, two pairs of wires. And this, this is rather silly for me to, uh, to draw here. But this is what I've got going in the box. Okay, and then another battery here at 1.5 volts. through a fuse and there's the four wires coming out the four wires very very simple uh, the 9 volt batteries there's eight of them eight times 9.6 equals 72 0.68 0 0.6 of 8 would sound like I don't know, 5 or something like that, 72, 77, you know, 75 volts anyway. Something like that, somewhere in that range. Uh, these radios will work down to 40. I've had them working at 40 volts. You can hardly even tell it's 40 and not, not 90 or 80 or something like that. Down here, I've actually got two batteries. Terrible diagrams. Terrible, terrible, terrible diagrams. <laughs> Two batteries in parallel. That's a, uh, that's a lousy... I could just say it. I've got two D cells in parallel, which you'll see. In, you can see them right now. Why don't we get that thing out here? Take a look at how he did it. Okay, so the two batteries are out of the holders right now. Here's the two holders. These two batteries are in parallel. And that was to double the life. I had done some calculations before putting this together and determined that these, the, the heater batteries, these ones here, are the ones that are going to wear out quickest. So I thought, well, I'll put two in in parallel. That will double the life, bring it up in the same range as the life of these 9-volt batteries. Uh, when I put this together, I measured the actual drain current. Uh, no, no surprise here, um, it's basically 50 milliamps per vacuum tube. Uh, sometimes the output tube uh, has a double filament, so it takes 100 milliamps. So you just count the number of tubes, multiply by 50, that gives you the current. The current, when I measured it, is around 200 milliamps. 200 milliamps, uh, or 100 per battery. 100 milliamp drain on a battery like this will give you uh, three hundred hours of operation <laughs> 300 these guys have a drain of about 10 to 15 milliamps and these batteries based on that drain rate will last about 30 hours so I got it totally backwards and I really did so I've got uh, uh, something like 300 hours of battery power here 30 hours here 30 hours still pretty good uh, the, the radio you're going to hook this up to, you know, an old farm radio, is not something you're going to play every night. Well, I would be surprised. If you're going to play it every night, then this is not the way to go. This is what you would do if you want to play the radio uh, half an hour, once in a while, for fun, pleasure, and to show friends that your radio works. Uh, for everyday use, well, you're going to end up, you know, you're going to end up putting in a fair number of these 9 volt batteries in the end. These guys are going to last forever. So, okay, you can't know everything until you get it done and then look back at it. So here, here's the connector. Yeah, including getting the wrong connector on here. Remember I mentioned that I had one of these sticking out with the live terminals. Now it's this. And you have no way to short this out. Fantastic. Um, so here you see the eight batteries. One's out because I just have this kind of de deactivated right now. 
and the uh, wires come in through a hole I drilled and a grommet I stuck in. These wires are really, really stuck in here. They they're really don't need to be strain relieved at all back there. You really have to yank on it to, to pull it. Wires come through, power passes through these two fuses. The uh, heater fuses are fused at one amp and the 9 volt batteries are fused at a half an amp in here. These fuse holders, you just pop this out, there's the fuse. Otherwise, back in it goes. There we are. Now we throw the lid on this. I'll put the batteries in in a bit. Well, I can put them in right now. Put them in right now. I would say you can leave these D cells uh, if they're power. If they've got a lot of power in them, they're going to last quite a long time just sitting here. Um, eventually. Uh, most of these D cells will leak. I'm sure you know that. You've opened up an old flashlight and then there's a mucked up uh, battery. So you got to keep an eye on these ones. I'm going to put this away for a year or two. It's probably better to pop these out. Maybe keep them out. 9 volt, you don't have to worry much about. 9 volt batteries, uh, they will continue to operate for years and years and years. So if you put this away for three years, pull it out. Almost certainly these 9 volt batteries are still going to be just as good as they were. These ones probably too, but maybe not. And I'm not a battery expert to tell you for sure what to expect. Now we'll put this guy in. Uh, these battery holders, the box, uh, came from suppliers on the other side of the planet. It took me a while, uh, six weeks of waiting for them to be mailed in. And I'll show you the battery holder here. Very simple, nothing expensive about these. So this is what I got, 9 volt battery holder. Now one of the surprises was these little bumps here, which keeps this flat part off the surface. So when I went to glue this, this is all glued together. I had to put a lot of glue in here in order to make sure the glue gets between here and the, the flat part. The wiring and that is just hidden underneath. I just tucked it underneath these, the uh, wires that are running around between them. It's just all in series. Red to black, red to black, and so on. And of course the D cell battery holders are these. Again, just about as cheap and simple as you can get. This time they're totally flat here. So a little less glue. Hold them down. I had thought about screwing them on and Decided, well, that's not good. I don't want to put holes all through here and have screws sticking out the box. This looks really nice when I close it the way it is. I also considered putting in some switches. I was really kind of intent on doing this, in fact, uh, so you could turn the power on and off. One of the reasons for doing that, putting a switch in, is because one of the radios, there, there, there's a pair of radios involved here that are owned by the same individual. And so the idea is to power both radios from the one box, uh, alternately. Um, the one radio, the power switch is broken. Um, so what I've done is I permanently shorted out the power switch in the radio. The radio is switched on all the time now. So anytime you, you plug this in, the radio is going to come on. So the, the small risk there with these farm radios is uh, they never have a panel light because that would be a waste a battery power so if you have the volume turned right down you can become fooled and think that uh, the radio is, is not on and you drain all your batteries out and I think if one of these radios I noticed when you turn the volume down you can't turn it all the way down you can't get rid of it entirely and I suspect that that was a uh, trick uh, to make sure you were always aware when the radio was switched on because a big pain in the in the arse if you drained your battery uh, back in back when these radios were popular, you'd have to, uh, I guess, next time you go into town, take your radio battery with you down to the radio shop and get them to charge it up for a couple of hours. And bring the radio battery back and run your radio again. You really didn't want to do that, and it cost some money, of course. You didn't want that to happen by accident. So, But I decided against having the switch, again, because it would stick out of the box, complicated the box, and my instruction anyway, as I thought about it, to the owner is going to be, always unplug when done. Always unplug when done. 
no matter what, no matter which radio you have this operating on, always unplug it. So that kind of covers the issue of, uh, of the switch. Okay, so this is what the box looks like when it's done. Yes, I have had some feet. I could put feet in there. Let me try peeling this off, but it usually makes a mess, doesn't it? So there we go. Oh, someone's at my door. Who's at the door? Is somebody there? Hello. Hello. Come on in. Yeah, come on in. Want to come in and see my battery box? Come on. Come on. See, once again, he wants me to go out. It's like, it's like we're challenging each other. No, you come here. No, you come here. Come on. Come on, cat. Come on. Come on. You can't resist. Oh, for crying. Now he's going to try all the lovey-dovey tricks on me. Oh, come on, Peanut. Yes, Peanut is this cat's name. Peanut. Don't get distracted now. Peanut. Peanut. What, exa yeah, what exactly do you want? He's thinking about it. He's just thinking about it. What do you want? Uh, now, I, I, I can't speak cat, so I, I don't know what he said. Peanut, don't get distracted. You gotta say, you gotta tell me what you want. Now, if I walk towards him, what are the chances he's just gonna scoop? Very friendly cat, this one. Right? Oh, look, it's gonna bury his head. Yeah, I've had maybe ten cats. Maybe not quite ten cats. This one's a special one. For sure. Right? Isn't that right? <laughs> Okay, so I understand people like looking at cats on the internet. I never look at cats on the internet, so here's a shot, just, just in case it's true. What are you looking at? The last time you got freaked out over an armadillo. <laughs> okay, down you go. Back to what I was doing. Tail up with a hook on the end. He's happy. But he probably wants me to do something. Anyway, well, okay, that was a good ending to, to looking at a box, isn't it? I mean, it's not so exciting when it's all done. So, of course, I didn't really say it, but one of these is hanging out of the back of each of the two radios. Plugged in, and away we go. Great. Thanks so much for watching, and uh, I'll see you on the next video.